Well, everyone is writing code and very few people think about writing the optimized code. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you a very beautiful optimization technique called debouncing in JavaScript. So you must have seen in various website, we usually have a, this kind of a search bar where when we start typing anything, for example, when I start typing laptop, you see a lots of suggestion here. So if you think about writing a, this kind of a program or this kind of a web page, so you must be thinking that I could just attach a on key press event to this input search box and make the API call and search for the matching results from the database. And this approach makes sense. But if you think about the complexity of this kind of a program, so each time we're going to press the key, it's going to make API call. And if I type some long keyword, like for example, I'm typing laptop, so it would have made a six API call, which seems to be pretty costly. So in this video, we are going to optimize this thing and limiting the number of API calls being made in this kind of a scenario. So let's just get back to the code. So I have this setup here where I'm using Visual Studio Code and I've opened the Chrome on the right side and using Live Server extension to reload the page. And I have attached this script.js file here where I will write the JavaScript code. And in the index.html file, uh, I've attached this input tag. So if I just save the program, you will see an uh, input tag here. So this will be basically our search bar where we will type something and try to call not API exactly, but we'll create some kind of logic to limit the number of events. Okay, so what we can do is like we can add a event listener to this input tag that is on key press. So whenever a key is pressed, like on key press, you can attach and on key press, I want to execute a function. So I'll want to execute a function called search, which I'll just define in my JavaScript file. So if I save it and go back to our script JS file. So here I'll just create a function called function search. So this function will be called whenever the key is pressed. And I also want to receive the text here. So text we can receive like this and we can just pass the text from here using this dot value. So this will pass the text or whatever the text is input in the key press event or in the input box. And in the script JS, we can just receive it here. So here we will have to make an API call to the database, but sake of simplicity for this tutorial, we'll not actually call the API. We'll just try to understand the debouncing concept. So I can simply write here to the console saying like log to the console, whatever the text is uh, with some prefix like calling API and we can log this text to the console. If I save the program and start typing here, you see, I have pressed three keys and it has made three API calls to the database. So this seems to be pretty expensive. And now let's just optimize it. The first thing to optimize this code, what we can do is like, we can move this code inside a function called set timeout. And in the set timeout, we know the first argument is our function. So what set timeout will do, it will wait for the second argument of time. That is if you pass a 500 milliseconds here, so it will wait for a 500 millisecond and then call the previous function. So this function here will basically execute after 500 milliseconds. So if I save the program and start typing anything like uh, hello. So you see still there is no effect. It has still made many API calls like one, two, three, five. So it has made five API calls. Okay, to introduce the concept of debouncing here, what we can do, we know that, that this function will execute after 500 milliseconds. So if a user press any key before a 500 millisecond, we can just clear this interval, basically stop this function from executing. So what will happen? So if a user types very fast, for example, we usually have a kind of approach, like if I want to search for laptop, I may type LAP very fast. So then may give a pause. So whenever we will give a pause, this function will not stop before pausing like if i press the key again the previous function will be cleared basically this set timeout will be cleared and api call will not be made so how can we approach is this like so this set timeout returns the id and using that id we can clear this set timeout basically if the time interval of this set timeout is not over we can stop this set timeout from executing so we can store the id in some variable and before that we can initialize the id with something you can initialize with anything like id minus one so we know this function will execute the each time the key is pressed so what we can do is here we can call a function called clear interval 
and pass the id here so what will happen is like if this event is not executed and the again key is pressed this will clear the interval so whatever the code was to be executed this will stop now so if i save the program and go here and make vikran you see a only single api call is made for vikran so if i press slowly so you will see a more api call will be made but if i tap fast you will see for the laptop a single api call is made so yes this is a concept of debouncing so you should implement this in your own program and this is asked in many javascript based interview questions so whenever you are writing code try to implement this kind of a concept in your program because it makes your program much more efficient than before so i hope you do get the idea about the debouncing in javascript so this was it for the video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to the channel and if you have any issue with the program please let me know in the comments Thank you and see you soon.